Well, hello again there, folks. We're here for another ship video. Are you here to see the Misk Reliance series? I am too. I'm here. I'm going to be your narrator, your guide here. As we, uh, we are over here in the Crusader system at our, our new 314 landing zone. And what do you guys think about, uh, what do you guys think about this? What do you think about Orison? We landed up here on top of a uh, moving platform here. Pretty interesting. Oh, look at that. Well, that's the ship we're going to take a look at today. Uh, the Reliant Core, or I think it's called Core A, maybe, but in the commercial. And uh, we're going to look at the, the whole Reliant series in this one video. The Reliant Core. The Reliant Sen, the Reliant Mako, and the Reliant Tana. And that video is coming at you right now. All right, guys, so we're back here. Thanks for watching the intro there. And I, I do want to say thank you very much to our patrons over on Patreon. You guys are phenomenal. Thank you for what you do and helping us become a better channel. So I thought about doing this video in a bunch of different spots, but uh, what really, really st uh, stuck out to me was I haven't done any anything much on uh, Orison. So I thought, why not move on a la or land on a moving platform? We'll do our video this way. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at this this beast, the Reliant Core with a K. Uh, the Reliant Core is the base model of the Reliant series and is kind of a mini hauler, like a light freight uh, with additional speed and dogfighting capabilities not found in a dedicated freighter ship. It is specifically designed as a multi-purpose ship and has a larger carrying capacity than many ships in this class. I don't agree with that last statement. I believe it's 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 cargo capacity is six SCU SCU compared to like the Aurora or something, which is quite a bit smaller, um, which I think is four cargo units. So two cargo units aren't going to do a whole lot for you. But uh, one of the quotes uh, from Carl Mimsy, an independent hauler, is when I tell people I'm a hauler, they instantly assume I got some lump of a ship that that it can't be sexy. I tell you, there ain't nothing better than seeing their face drop once my core goes vertical. So there is a really cool thing about the Reliant series in general, and that it's one of the f one of the uh, few transformer type ships in Star Citizen. And you will see right now it's in its horizontal configuration. This is its uh, one of its configurations that can actually fly in pretty well. Um, and then when you hit the VTOL button, the K button, it actually flips around into a like a vertical type of uh, configuration. And uh, very much like uh, the B-Wing in Star Wars, how it just kind of flips around. Um, so maybe this is Star Citizen's B-Wing. Let's go ahead and take a look at the ship. Uh, in front of us, right front and center with like a bubble-like, very good cockpit for, for seeing things is uh, the cockpit. With, from my view, the pilots on the right and the co-pilots on the left. Um, that is your crew in the Reliant Core. It is a crew of one to two. Um, you can see the core does have this kind of blue and gray paint scheme as well. Um, you can see some of our sensors on the front. Um, it is a symmetrical ship, um, so you can see one of our first hard points here is a size 2 hard point, and right now I have a size 2 weapon on it. No gimbals on that guy. Coming over all the way to the edge is uh, one of the wing hard points. Uh, this wing hard point is a size 4 hard point, which can fit one of two gimbals. It can fit the Toshima turret, which is what's on there right now. The Toshima turret allows you to have two size two weapons. Um, and that's what I have mounted on there right now. Um, or you can mount the Reliant, uh, the, the Gilroy gimbal. Um, these, these mounts are made specifically for the Reliant series. The Gilroy gimbal is a size three. 
A uh, gimbal, it, well, it allows you to mount a size three weapon on a gimbal. So you definitely have a lot of gimbal options here with the Reliant series. Um, but in this case, I prefer to have, in, in PAX 3.14, mind you, where all the weapons are the same DPS-wise for like lasers and ballistics are a different issue. Um, I'm going to have the most firepower I can get. So I have six laser uh cannons i think on this build i do we're gonna do some laser repeaters on some other builds coming around the starboard side of the spacecraft we will see one of the big engines here that is currently in its vtol uh, landing configuration where it actually comes it, it's actually facing down when we raise the landing gear this engine will rotate and it will provide thrust going back to front um, the back area here, which is the cargo area, is also the loading area. We'll, we'll actually get in in this area. Uh, and then we have a completely symmetrical port side to the aircraft. Same type of engine, same type of exhaust, uh, same type of weapon setup with our Toshima turret. And there you go, guys. That is uh, the walk around of the Reliant core. So let's go ahead and uh, we will increase our movement speed here and let's go ahead and get in the back of the reliant series all right that's a that's actually a really nice uh animation we got a top and bottom of our of our section here now when this ship was first made let me go ahead and close up the door there was uh, an issue trying to fit cargo in here and what the developers ended up doing was because the outside of the ship had already been developed um at first this ship only had four scu of cargo which is just like the aurora they wanted this center walkway here that i'm on um because you got to get to the cockpit somehow and so they had the cargo grid was basically this well what they decided to do was just extend the ship out a little bit give us two more scu of cargo space here and there we go so this this ship is for light freight six scu of cargo like i said and uh guys that's that's about it there's not a whole lot to the reliant series these are these are smaller ships they are light ships i don't think there's anything necessarily interactable right now um not in this area i guess this is where our system some of our systems are going to be but there's nothing in there right now so over here we have the co-pilot seat and we have our pilot seat now you know notice this thing rotates and stuff and we're going to watch the rotation here in just a sec let's go ahead and enter the pilot seat all right there we go so we got a really cool uh four multi-function display oh we got six my i'm sorry we got six because more of it comes down so we have one two three four five six multi-function displays which is really neat um, a lot of information there, and then we have a center radar. What it does give us, though, because here's the default view. You don't actually see the, the other two MFDs up there. In the default view, you have a lot of view space down here, and you have a lot here on the ground. So really, really good cockpit um, layout, I guess, is what I should say. Um, let me... Oh, I'm not trying to fire my weapons here. Let me turn on the engine. There we go. Okay, so now our engines are on. Uh, in the cockpit area itself, up top, we have open exterior. Press to unlock. We have a power button. We have an engine on, engine off. Don't think there's that much more to it. We have our multifunction displays. We have an exit over here to the right. Guys, that's, that's, that's really about it. Small ship, easy ship to figure out. And yeah, that's the... We can see from our weapons over here, uh, that is, we have four missiles on the, the core version and everything is repeaters over here. So this one I, I set up for all repeaters. So it's all Badger 227s. All right, well, that's that pretty much concludes the cockpit tour. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the exterior of the ship before we take off from this platform here. As we come around to the front, as you can see, it's very, very symmetrical. Um, our engines are rotated down right now. Let's uh, let's get a decent view. Let's we gotta make sure the ship here doesn't hit us. Are we still attached to the ship? Are we still kind of moving with the ship here? 
It feels like we are. It feels like it should be independently moving. That's kind of funny. Anyway, guys, you see those engines right there? We're going to uh, go ahead and raise up our four landing gear. There you go. You see the gear came up and then the engines rotated to the back. And we're still kind of attached with this ship right now. Let's go ahead and make our way independent of the ship. Whoa. Okay. Now we're in atmosphere. There must have been a little bit of gravity or something over there. But now that ship's moving independent of us. So the Reliant actually handles pretty darn well in atmosphere. Um, I've flown it here a little bit around Orison, and uh, it's pretty good. It's not phenomenal. It's it's a freighter. It's not meant to be um, this, you know, acrobatic type ship. It's not an M50, but it handles itself pretty well. Now, you can fly in this configuration that we're flying in now, which makes you... Uh, Guinea, at least horizontally, um, as we kind of fly over some of the areas of forest in here, it really is uh, a beautiful landing zone. And uh, as we do that, let me cut off the the, the uh, engines here or the power. Now, here's the cockpit view of this. Okay. Now, as far as getting out of my cockpit seat um, in this configuration, I can't, guys. I can't get out of the seat right now. Even if I look over here, because our landing gear are up, I can't get out of the seat in this configuration. Now, let's go ahead and we'll hit K and uh, we'll show you the the, the transformer, <laughs> as I like to call it. See, the fins went up and the ship rotated and now it's in its vertical configuration, which is the standard configuration here. This is the configuration you want when you're going to fight, when you're going to do stuff. You notice the cargo area did not move. The only thing that, that, that moved was basically everything else. So I'm going to hit it again and go back to where we were. So the cockpit does actually rotate around. And in going instead of going from left to right, it goes from top to bottom. Let me show you this from, uh, from inside the cockpit itself. I'm going to hit OK. See, my co-pilot's not there anymore. My co-pilot's down there. I can't really see him. So, But even in this view... Um, I cannot get out of my seat because behind me is just like a wall. You can't really see it real well, but it's just a wall. Don't don't freak me out about shields, lady. Um, I don't know what's up with the shields right now. They should be up. Are they not up? I guess I, I need to make sure I do have shields. That's kind of an important thing here. Wow. There might be a bug with this because I, I turned off power earlier and stuff. Um, very weird. Anyway, guys, uh, let me retransform. No, if I hit landing gear in this option, it does fully go into its kind of landing gear configuration and everything. It, it automatically transforms the ship back. And if I hold down Y, I will end up being able to get out of the uh, the seat and head to the back cargo area. So, which is really loud for some reason. Anyway, so that does work, guys. Um, what else about this ship is we're going to fly around Oris in a little bit. Or we're going to try. Um, so this ship does cost... Uh, there we go. Let's, the ship costs in real life uh, $65 US, and this ship is always available. Uh, the core version of the ship, mind you, is always available. How pretty is that? Orison with its cherry blossoms. Very nice. Uh, the ship's uh, originally it was $50, but now it's uh, $65. Always available. The cost of buy it in game is $744,000 Alpha UEC. Um, which you can buy this at New Deal Shipyard in Moorville. Um, you can rent it for just under 15000 a day or 6500 rack. It's about 2 minutes, 15 seconds to claim. Expedite is instant, and that fee is about 340 Alpha UBC. So one of the cool uh, things about the Reliant Core, 
it's made by MISC, right? And so MISC does a lot of work with the Xeon. Um, so there's Xeon technology in the Reliant series. Uh, the Reliant makes uh, really good use of the Xeon technology from kind of a moving cockpit that slots into place depending on your flight mode, omnidirectional thrusters. Um, that's kind of that's kind of what a POAS thing is, and I guess they're licensed here for the Reliant series. Um, they have advanced you know, metal composites, uh, making up the armored wingspan, and every control surface has been meticulously updated by those developed by the freelan uh, for the freelancer by MISC's internal Xenotech team. Uh, the Reliant series, uh, follow uh, following on the success of the Freelancer Built for Life campaign that MISC had begun development of a smaller introductory class spacecraft, which is the Reliance series. It was called the Boomerang Project, and uh, they can all be operated by a single pilot. Uh, Boomerang later turned into the Reliant uh, and was developed in both the main MISC plant lo uh, located in Seisai uh, and the Xi'an MISC plant located in Shorvu by lead designer Edward Auburn and lead engineer Monica Fayez. The ship series is designed to compete with the RSI Aurora and the Consolidated Outland Mustang. Um, the core variant specifically was uh, designed by MISC to act as a balanced support uh, of its own hull series. Um, while the hull line is solely dedicated to moving cargo from one point to another with little interference, the nimble and better armor line is ideal for journeys that might involve an engagement or two. The Reliant has been approved for sale and flight around the un in around the inhabited galaxy in 2946 um there is a few skins that we'll go over when we uh do the loadout of this um and uh just you know in real world this uh this ship got a new twin gimbal mount which is the toshima turret in alpha 3.9 we already talked about that and we talked about the scu for the ship at first it started out as four and now it's six because they they elongated the cargo area so let's let's get a move on out here um i hope you guys have enjoyed seeing a beautiful orison because we're gonna transit out of this and i think we're going to uh probably head out to well, we'll be in the crusader area but uh We'll show you some of the dogfighting capability in first person and third person. We'll do a loadout. And believe it or not, there is a ship commercial for this, but there is not a brochure. So you guys don't have to sit through uh, one of my brochures. <laughs> so let's head about out into space. It's going to take a minute. Um, I'll do a little time lapse for you guys because it, it takes forever to get out of uh, the atmosphere here and, and Crusader and uh, we'll get on our way. All right, folks, so here we are. We got contact received, and uh, I figured why my shields weren't working is because I didn't have any power to them. I got to remember to do that, right? So here we go. Reliant Core, a little first person dogfighting here, and we have a Vanguard Ward, and I might want to go into missile mode here. Um, I didn't mean to do that. Whoops. I didn't mean to dumb fire that. Um, I got to remember my own keys, don't I? So we have three more left. 
Let's see if we can get all of them on the warden. We want to get a little bit closer than I, I like to do it at about five. He's getting missiles on me. I got missiles on him. I dodged his missiles. Will he dodge mine? Not sure. Now I got six size twos. So I'm going to try to get out and look how many. Oh, look at that. Doesn't that look cool? It does look cool. Now this is fully balanced weapons right now. And you see how fast they go. So I'm going to I'm going to do this against my own better judgment and increase power to weapons all the way 100%. It'll allow us to fire a little bit longer. Um but we'll we won't be recharging shields or or our afterburner. And our shields are already down, so we're going back up to F8 to recharge the shields. That didn't work very well. A little bit of desync here. Um, I pretty much got his shields down, though. He's been shooting me, though. Even though it doesn't feel like he's been shooting me. Come on, get him. I may bump power to my shields just a little bit more. How did he get a missile lock on me? Oh, his friends are probably here. Countermeasures. Say, how did he get a missile lock on me that quick? We were way too close. All right, his friend is an Aegis Gladius. And his other friend just showed up too. Oh, lots of desync there. I'll be glad when that's fixed. Okay, Gladius. Now these uh, repeaters that I'm using, very nice, are fixed. Um, I will be using gimbals in uh, one of the other variants here as we go up against this eclipse with his ballistics. Okay, I'm going to bump up my weapons by two giving me 67% on the weapons cuz oh man he went quick okay guys so a little bit of a uh, little bit of dog fighting with the reliant core you can see it handled itself pretty well um i think it did a good job anyway uh for some reason on this ship i just i like to fly it like this uh all the time um, except when I'm in like a dogfight because it's just weird. It's different. You see the, the weapons do still fire. So, uh, I mean, it works. I guess I just like my, my ships more, a little more horizontal. There you go. Anyway, we're going to head back to Port Alisar and well, actually, you know what, before we go to PO. Let's go do a cargo run just to show you in the cargo variant what it kind of looks like when cargo is filled up. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go we'll go trade that at Orison or something like that. So stick around. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll cut back into the video as soon as we get a load of cargo in the ship. All right, folks, so we're back. We're here at Damar, and I just bought six SCU worth of cargo. And we're going to let you see what it looks like in the Reliant core. So this is six SCU of cargo loaded up in the ship. And it's just, I mean, it's all labeled metals because I bought some agresium and some tungsten. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's what the ship looks like loaded down. Um, you can see that really it's the, the little walkway here is kind of nice to have so 
let's go ahead and grab this uh, cargo and we will head out of uh, Daymar, uh, out of, uh, if you recognize Area 141. That is where we're at. We're going we're gonna to take off from here. Not sure why that happened, but it, it did. <laughs> we're going to raise the landing gear. Daymar is probably my favorite moon. It's it's really pretty in the daytime and in the nighttime. So anyway, you know, I've never actually traded anything at Orison. So that'll be a first time for me. Stand by if you would please for another time lapse. And uh We'll go over to the TDD over at Orison or whatever the trade division is called. And uh, we'll we'll get our, our stuff traded in. Uh, I think I spent, didn't spend very much, maybe a few thousand, like under 10,000 for sure. We'll see how much we make over there at Orison. And uh, then we'll grab the next ship in the series, which will be the Reliant Sen or San. So stay tuned. Well, folks, apparently we can't actually sell anything here <laughs> at the TDD at Orison. So in lieu of going to a different station, um, we're just going to cut it right here. And we're going to go into the hangar and call out a different vehicle. And we'll go from there. Um, I think the next vehicle is the... Should be the Reliant Sen. So stay tuned for that. Fisk Reliant Sen. It's a versatile single ship explorer and science platform. Intended to be outfitted with long range capabilities and an advanced sensor suite. It is intended to function both alone or as part of the fleet of a MISC endeavor. Despite the intent of the ship's design, the current in game fuel tanks and sensor array are both typical for ships of the Sins size and class. All right, guys, welcome to the portion of the video where we go over the Reliant Sen um, by MISC here. Um, a good description of this ship. Magellan, Pierce, Croshaw. Names that echo through history thanks to their adventurous spirit. A curious nature and a reliable ship. The Reliant Sin, perfect for the expire, aspiring explorer who wants to whisper their name into the annals of history. So this is a light science ship. Uh, size of small, crew is one to two. Um, it does carry two SCU of cargo, but again, it is based on science, right? Um, we can see it has the pretty much the same design as any other Reliant here, of course. Um, notice no weapons on the end. Instead, these are basically science, um, like instrumentation type things. And it's the whole end, the wingtip things instead of guns. They're science modules. We still do have uh, guns, uh, our regular normal guns on the size 2 mount uh, on the Sen. You can buy the Sen for eight hundred and forty thousand off UEC um, in game at Lorville. You can rent it for about just under seventeen grand a day or eighty four hundred rec. Claim time is about two, just a little over two minutes with three hundred and forty alpha UEC instant expedite time. Um, you cannot buy this ship in game anytime you want. It is eighty five dollars US when it is available for sale, like during the International Airspace Expo. Uh, what else about the Sin? Uh, there really is no gameplay with it right now. There's really no science gameplay. Um, it's it's just a ship right now that I don't think a lot of people have. Maybe they have it in their hangar, but they don't fly it. 
just because there's not a whole lot we can do right now. So let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, we did the exterior walk around. The door opens much the same way as anything else. Um, you'll do no you'll notice something different about the sin in that it does have two beds. So this is a reliant ship that you can actually sleep in. Uh, which gives that's good for because you know it's made for a little bit longer range type of stuff. This seat here is the basically the science uh, operator seat. Um, and you can tell there's like a microscope here where you can do all kinds of sciencey stuff. Um, but there's really no interactivity in the ship itself. It does have a, a toilet, um, a, a toilet with uh, the shower, which is pretty darn handy if I do not say so myself. And this one actually works, unlike some of the other ships where they don't work. But it also has a sink in there. So again, designed for much longer uh, duration. You can see we have some blankets and stuff down there. It looks like we could stick our hands in here and do some kind of manipulation with science stuff. Uh, there's no more interactivity on the rest of the uh, access points here. Uh, there's no docking collar or anything like that. Um, but it does have two SCU of cargo. I'm just not sure directly where, or like where it would go. Um, interesting though. Anyway, let's go ahead and hop in the pilot seat. We are here at Orison. Okay, that happens all the time. Um, okay, so here is the Reliance Sen. Not a whole lot we could do with this uh, ship today. I mean, well, I'll go do it like a, a quick dogfight, but there, I mean, <laughs> it's got fixed Bagger 227s on there and yeah it's 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 going to do okay but this is not a ship that's really meant for uh hard combat or anything like that but it can defend itself so we'll raise up here a little bit put our landing gear away and just like uh, anything else in the reliant series it, it's a transformer ship Meaning that it does do the whole, uh, oh, here we go. Transformer move with <laughs> going to a uh, vertical, um, a vertical type of transition. You notice, Ooh, there's a bug. If you look, you see those little thruster jets on the side. Those should not be there when we do the, uh, when we go back to like our horizontal layout. They are supposed to be there, but now we actually have our vertical layout ones showing up on the screen. So that is definitely a bug to report to uh, CIG because those should not be there. All right. Well, we're going to head on out of the atmosphere, folks. And uh, there's nothing much I can show you gameplay wise of the Sen, but we'll get out into space We'll do a little more of an extensive uh, space, you know, uh, walk around to the ship. And uh, we'll try a little light first person shooting combat. And then uh, we'll move on over to the next ship, the Reliant Mako. So just hang on to your butts. All right, folks. So uh, we finally cleared uh, Crusader's atmosphere. And boy, that, that, I guess that, that's really the reason I never really go to Orison. Um, beautiful place but it just takes a really long time to get to and get out of so we're here in the reliant sin with uh we got our size two fixed weapons on here and we got two of them and that's pretty much it we got we do have four missiles on the ship which again i didn't mean to fire that missile i gotta fix my buttons you think i'd learned my lesson but uh <laughs> i guess we're only shooting three at this uh, Misk Freelancer. So we got Misk on Misk Violence going on here. We're just trying to do a real quick bounty mission here um, just to show the effectiveness of the Sen in combat. All right. So we got two missiles going at him. And I'll shoot the last one also, and then we'll go to guns. Oh, he's upset.
I might have to up the recharge rate on my guns here. We'll have to see. Freelancer does have some good shields, and it's a miss, too, so. Oh, and for some reason... Oh, I know why. Because I had everything set to thrusters. No wonder it didn't work. Can't let him get his shields back. I am using dual T16,000 sticks, if anybody is wondering. I do have a video on that of how to set them up and everything, if you're interested. And shoot, his... Oh, I just hit an asteroid. Oh, I blew something up off of my shit. Oh, those are my guns. Well, guys, now I'm, I'm, I'm down to one gun because I'm dumb and I hit an asteroid. So let's see if I make it or not. Oh, of course. They're going to shoot some weapons on me here. Lock some missiles on me. Yeah, shield's definitely under attack. Sometimes... I really wish not every single battle was in an asteroid field for a bounty mission, you know? I mean, I know it provides stuff to look at and things like that, but a lot of times you just can't see them. I'm not ashamed to admit that it does happen. You run into asteroids. It's not intentional. Oh, well, I knocked a piece of your ship off there, buddy. Notice when I went down to one gun, I got way more ammo in this one gun now. That's kind of cool how the power system adapts. My ship's damaged, I lot, you know, and I, you know, power is going to be routed to this gun, and I really like that. I'm I, I don't think I've ever done that before in this patch and seen kind of how that worked, but I like I I like it. Okay, took him out with one gun. Well, let's take care of his friends. And more than likely, if a Sin really engages in combat, it's probably going to get its butt whooped for the most part anyway. But can we do a medium risk target mission with just one size 2 gun? We can. Can we survive? Let's find out. He's upset. Asia Saber, everybody. Ooh, he's gone. Next. Asia Saber. All right. like the days of old just hold down that trigger right. come on boom shakalaka all right we successfully made it with half of our sin nice uh damage rendering there though Anyway, wow. Sorry about that, folks. It's I'd like to blame it on the ship, but it's uh, pretty much all me that was the cause of that. Let's try to find. Uh... I don't think we're going to be able to find it. I was going to try to find Crusader there, but. I think that's about... Oh, it was hiding. Okay. Come on. So, we're going to head back to Port Allstar, get some repairs done, and then I'm going to pull out the next uh, ship that really has no purpose in the Reliant series. The Reliant Mako, or Mako, as it's called in the video. Video. And uh, we'll show off that ship a little bit. And then we'll move on to what everybody wants to see, the Reliant Tana. So just hang in there.
All right. The Misc Reliant Mako is a news van variant of the Reliant series. It combines the flexibility of the Reliant frame with state-of-the-art image enhancement suite and turret-mounted optics. The need for the reporting variant was identified after a view of Spectrum broadcasts that revealed the low-quality video of combat incidents, as well as an increase in sexual incidents. So here we have the Reliant Mako, folks. This is take two because I had a bug earlier. I had to blow up the ship. And of course, there's somebody griefing Port Alisar, and uh, there's a whole bunch of debris there out in space, and you can see the turrets going crazy. So... Anyway, the Mako, we're going to do this quick here on the pad, and then we'll get out into space. But you can see this is part of the uh, the camera setup on, on the on the ends of the wings. That is the sacrifice here for this variant of the Reliant. Here we have some um, laser cannons. Um, I believe those are fixed size twos, uh, as well as some missiles. Uh, our standard Reliant type of cockpit. That that cool yellow paint scheme for the Mako, as the video says, the Mako. And then on the other side is, uh, and it, it helps also with the the uh, capture of video. Now, everything else pretty much standard here. Uh, the There is no SCU in this ship. It does have a crew of one to two people. Um, but there's no, you can't do any type of cargo with this. You notice it does have two beds. So a little bit of longevity in this. And then this is the camera operator seat. Which we'll, we'll see if that works here in a second. I haven't been in it in quite a while. Uh, this looks like some kind of electronic setup for the camera. Maybe like a tape backup type or a broadcast type of type of thing. It looks like it does have a toilet. Um, yeah, it certainly does have a toilet and a uh, shower. And then again, just like the Sen, there's no other interactability in the ship. And it just has those couple guns and like four missiles. So... Let's go ahead and fire this ship up and uh, we'll get out of here before we get shot down. There's a bad guy out there. Uh, Ra Rav Bossman Bob, apparently, is that person. And uh, yeah, I'm just trying to make a video, buddy. <laughs> Don't shoot my ship. All right, we'll make our way to selling here before we do any more of the tour. Okay. All right, so here we are at selling, and again, the uh, the Mako variant is a uh, transformer type of ship. It looks really good in this uh, in this light right here. Um. Can't see as much on the opposite side, but uh, it, it is a it, it, the Reliant is a pretty cool looking ship. I, I guess I don't fly it enough to really appreciate it. Well, let's go ahead and uh, we'll go back to this and we'll drop our landing gear so that we can actually get out of our seat. <laughs> so while this does have a crew of one to two, you might not always have a co-pilot here, right? You, that. That might be your reporter, and then you have a pilot over here. Why is it so loud back here? Anyway, let's go ahead and hop in this reporter-esque type of beat. And it may not work without another person in the cockpit and us in transformer mode. I'm, not, I'm just not sure. I haven't been there in a long time. There's our power on. And we have like a whole smorgasbord of MFDs but nothing that I could see to enter a remote turret or to use anything what is that that's oh that's power okay power off open door I don't exit It does work from this seat. I can actually open the door. That's kind of crazy. Um, but guys, I don't see anything to actually use the, the camera on board here. So really doesn't do us any good. We could hit F4 and then we have a, you know, a drone view. But I think the whole idea of this ship is to be able to 
you know, actually broadcast uh, stuff into the spectrum, which would actually link. It would link back to like in real world spectrum, and then we could broadcast different things with the ship. So the potential there is really cool. I just don't think the networking ability is there quite yet. Um, and I hope it will be one day because it would be really cool to kind of have a role as like a reporter. I mean, who who doesn't want to be able to report on some of that stuff? I think it's I think it's a pretty neat thing to do. Um, but as we're going to see here, I'm going to go up into our power system. If it'll let me, you're going to see, see this. I got a slipstream snow blinds on here, uh, light strike cannons and mirage shields. So all this, this ship is fully stealth out, right? So we're, we're not going to, I mean, we can hit the stealth button. Um, it doesn't actually do anything. Yeah. What we need to find is our heat display. And then from our heat display, we can actually do things. Um, so let's just grab the comms here. From our heat display, we will actually suppress our IR. And our heat should go down. Yeah, see our IR, our infrared goes down about a thousand. It's still not very stealthy. Our IR is very high, but uh, it's about as stealthy as it's going to get. So let's let's find a, uh, a mission here. Just a quick bounty hunter mission. We'll do a medium. All right, and let's see how the ship does in combat. We're gonna head towards Yella. Now on this ship, I have two light strike two cannons. Jeez. The quantum bugs in this game can be staggering sometimes, and they are irritating. There we go. Please recalibrate. Okay. Well, like I was saying, we have two Life Strike 2 cannons on the ship for weapons, and that's it. Um, and all the shields are stealth, power plant, everything is stealth on here. There we go. And we do have a little bit higher of an ammo count with the, the stealths compared to the repeaters. Um, and they do fire actually fairly quick for cannons. I always consider the cannon to be a longer range weapon, have a smaller fire rate, but be a little bit more powerful. They're a lot closer to repeaters in this model right now in 3.14. All right, let's go find our bad guy here. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and give us more laser cannons just to boot. Um, as far as there is no auto gimbal on here, I don't have it auto gimbaled, so we're just going to use regular lock mode. All right, let's... I guess we can see how stealthy we can get. Um <laughs> You never know. Um, there's issues with missiles right now as well. Uh, at least with my account, I can't actually like put new missiles on ships, even if I have them on other ships. I don't know if that's for everybody or if it's just for me, but it just doesn't work. So this is pretty standard. Now we're just waiting to find our bad guy. Oh, looks like he's down here. So there's 14k away. We have a couple Ignite 4s. That we want to shoot when we're in range. But we're hoping to... Shoot them before he sees us, if that makes sense. Okay. So we're 9,000 away. We're in range. It doesn't look like he sees us. Let's just go ahead and shoot two, see what happens. This is a Cutlass Black. I mean, who would think a reporter's going to fire first? You know what I mean? Looks like they did hit. I damaged his ship. Let's fire the other two. This is what a stealth ship does. It pretty much uses the missiles to attack first. 
and then it uh then it goes after the target his friend already showed up so now right now it's all about oh yeah he saw us we got a couple of missiles at us you got something for me huh let's see how these cannons work in combat i'm not expecting any miracles here It's all about misdirection here, trying to... Oh, he's definitely hitting us. If our shields get real low, then I'll put him back to normal recharge. He does have friends here. Since we're not able to get enough shots out, I'm going to go ahead and put shields back to normal recharge. This is the advantage of repeaters. You can get many more shots off. Target friendly. Oh, did someone get us already? Looks like we have some damage on us. Oh, it looks like the bottom part of our ship is gone. So someone got us. So just like the, uh, the sin. Can we finish the mission with just one gun? And this time it's a cannon and not a repeater. Shit. Oh, shit. Okay, I'm gonna boost the shields. And lower the guns. Gotta keep those shields up. I'm doing some damage to the cutty, but... It might be too little too late. With just one gun left, who knows. Use of afterburners, the use of turning. Yep, it did work. Although his his buddy's got some shots on me, that's for sure. Okay, now I'm just gonna increase the shields by one. Because I got plenty of ammo. I'm not gonna run out here. Oh, Mustang Delta, huh? So I would say out of all the Reliance, maybe it's the weapon choice, but I'd say it's probably the least combat friendly. It feels a little bit more sluggish in flight as well than some of the other variants, even the Sin. Felt better, but maybe it's because I've already taken so much damage. Maybe it's because of the desync. Kind of kills this game sometimes. Whoa, jeez, dude. Maybe it's the AI that apparently is uh, suicide bombers here. Well, I know I'm hitting you, dude. Am I even doing any damage? Oh, come on. That wasn't fair. How are my shields down so fast? You can't be mad at me. You took out half my ship. Okay. And he's down. The other one must have hit an asteroid or something. Anyway, guys, that is the combat effectiveness of he. Oh, the severely damaged. Uh, wow. That looks so weird. The Reliant Mako. And, uh, you know, just. It, it, I wish it wasn't even available, to be honest with you. Because there's no loop for it. There's nothing to do in this ship right now. There's no reporting aspect. It doesn't effectively work. So it's, it's just. I'd rather have this ship be in concept and have a loner. 
of a ship that actually does something that it's purpose to do. If that makes sense to you. Um, so anyway, I'm going to land at Port Olisar and we're going to get fixed up. Oh, hopefully that guy isn't over here trying to shoot everybody again. We're going to get all fixed up and uh, as soon as P.O. decides to spawn in, there we go. Yeah, and uh, then we're going to bring out the ship that I think most of you came to this uh, video to see. Gosh. The lag and st some of the stuff here. And that, anyway, that ship is the Reliant Tana. And we'll get with that video uh, as soon as possible. So stick with us. Oh my gosh. Not fun when this ship is damaged. All right, stick with us. We'll be right back. All right, folks. Well, we're at the part of the video that you probably came here to watch and see. We're going to do a review on the Reliant Tana. This bad boy is probably one of the only two Reliants I would ever own. And this is specifically the combat variant of the Reliant series. Um, it is considered a light fighter. Um, Easy to maintain with a rugged construction, the Reliant Tana makes for an ideal choice for frontier and outpost defense. Thanks to its custom high yield power plant, stronger shields, and additional weapon mounts. And I've actually upgraded beyond what comes with stock, as I usually do. Uh, it is the most produced of the Reliant variants. The Tana was first developed by MISC engineers as a dedicated model for use by security operators in law enforcement circles looking for a cheap but durable addition to their fleet. As with all the Reliants here, we can see that the ship is symmetrical on both sides, except for this uh, sensor up front here. Uh, pretty standard cockpit design, but we can see that... Uh, we now have our six guns back with the Toshima turret that I put on here, which is really what you want in uh, Alpha 314. Um, it just is. Um, I have cannons on here. I believe they're all fixed. Um, so we have size two, six size two laser cannons all around. Um, let's go ahead and enter the back of the ship because everything else about it is pretty much the same as... The Reliant Core and the other ones. Um, the difference with this ship, uh, despite, I guess, Star Citizen Net Tools is not really updating a lot of their stuff, but I did look at the website and I noticed that all of the Reliant series are zero cargo except for the Core, which does still have six cargo units. So, with that being said, another really nice thing about the Tana is there are two beds. So, there's a little bit of longevity there for its crew of two. Um, on this side of the fence, though, there is, uh, it's basically, uh, let's see, nothing to interact with over here. Maybe this will be some sort of a weapons locker or armor locker one day. Um, nothing to interact with here. And, well, I guess there's our weapons rack over here. Um, although it's not. Well, it's not working. I don't have a weapon in my hand. There is a shoilet. Uh, shower and a toilet down there and then the beds are interactable but really this extra space over in this area um in in lieu of having cargo is going to be for extra missiles the tana holds a bunch of missiles and that's kind of what really sets it apart from the reliant core weapons wise they're the same but the core does cargo the tana has missiles in lieu of that and yes we are back at orison so, <laughs> yeah, I'm a glutton for punishment of getting out of this atmosphere, I guess. But uh, I wanted to do this video in Orison, so we'll go ahead and do our little lift up here, raise our landing gear. I really like that animation. The, the Reliant series has some really, really cool animations. Let's go ahead and fly our way out of here. make our way out of Orison here and uh that you know Orison daytime really good visually I don't know 
I guess that's something in space there. That was weird. Um, but nighttime is really where Orson's at. Uh, I think it's with the way they do the lighting and everything. I think it's more beautiful at night, to be honest with you. We will switch to our transformer mode here. And here you go, guys, the Reliant Tana. As we fly through Orison here, maybe that'll be the screenshot for the video. Or the, the thumbnail, that is. And you can see we got that graphical artifact still present in the Tana with the thrusters on the side. Not good. I'm going to take a screenshot for that to put into the issue council. I wonder if it's on the top if I, if I switch back. Let's see. Nope. Not on top and bottom, but just on the sides. All right. Let's uh, get out of this atmosphere and we'll do what the Tana is made to do. Oh, before we do that, let's go into our weapons view. You can see we have 20 missiles on board this ship and we have six fl-22 chronic laser energy i guess they're not lasers they're energy weapons and uh yeah you can see we have a total of 20 size 2 missiles i kept it size 2 i did not change anything to size threes which which is an option for the non-bespoke missile launchers which would be the ignites here um Anyway, yeah, let's let's head out of this atmosphere. Let's get out of here. Let's go do some combat. What the ship was really meant to do. Let's go launch some missiles, and uh, we'll get back with you as soon as we're doing that. All right, as we make our way to our target here, we'll go over some of the stats of the Tana. Um, again, I said zero cargo crew of one to two here with uh, someone in the co-pilot seat. Missile operator mode would be fantastic in this type of ship. The small ship uh, considered a light fighter. You can buy the ship for 870,000 Alpha UEC. And there's our target. Um, you can buy it at New Deal Shipyard in Lorville. You can rent it for about 17,500 Alpha UEC or 8,700 rec per day. Takes about almost three minutes to claim it with an expedite time of zero instant and 425 alpha uec uh, this ship when it is on sale it goes for about 75 dollars us and all sales are time limited um so uh invictus iae any any other times that might be on sale uh, its combat speed is 166 that's scm uh, meters a second with a maximum speed of 1150 and uh, I think it's time to engage our missile operator mode. Now, the pitch rolling yaw stats, from what I see, are they're all the same throughout the entire series of uh, ships. So we have uh, Anvil Valkyrie. We're going to need a lot of missiles on this guy. So we're going to be shooting a bunch of missiles as we come in because it has a ton of armor. That's a. So we got a series of four missiles off. Let's let them reload and we'll shoot them right again. Two, three, four, loading. Shooting them. Okay. He's not too happy. We're not too happy. I mean, I don't want to have to kill you, dude. I already got a major torque imbalance. I might have taken on more than I could chew. Again, I'm not the... Oh, my God. So many ballistics. Oh, there goes the Valkyrie. Uh, you guys aren't nearly going to be as good without him. These, I kind of like these laser cannons. They do, they do a little bit more damage than the repeaters, but they are a little bit slower as well. You can see we're, we're missing some weapons here as we took some hits. With our smoke trail. Oh! Some kind of a collision. We're spinning around. Okay. Oh, how is he still shooting us? Oh, we can't see anything. Oh, there we go. Okay. Looks like we are. We did take some damage. <laughs> did we hit an asteroid? I don't know. That was crazy. 
It was also a lot of fun. All right, Izzy. Looks like we only have four guns available to us. Well, maybe we have more. Oh, man, he went. He went quick. I didn't even get to see what type of ship he was. So there you go. HRT complete. Uh, some call to arms done. <laughs> and some ship damage. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, we definitely took some damage. Uh, let's see. We have... No, all, all of our guns are working. It's just the convergence points there. Um... Man, the good, good looking damage model on this ship. Um, you see our, our, our engines are a little bit damaged. Uh, see what it looks like here. Ah, uh, not too, not, not, you know, not the end of the world. Um, with a regular, oh, you know what? I had uh, weapons overcharged a little bit on this. I probably should have had it, it balanced, uh, giving me 21 ammo. Maybe that would have worked better. I'm just not sure. Um, but there you go, guys. That's some first-person combat for the Reliant Tana with with eight missiles I shot. Took out a Valkyrie pretty darn quick. I'm going to head over to PO and get some repairs done. And uh, next, you're going to see the loadout for all the Reliant series. After the loadout, we're going to do ship commercials, and then we're going to do some uh, some chase camera dogfighting with uh, me in the co-pilot seat and uh, my buddy Skidmark in the pilot seat. Let's see how good of a ton of pilot he is. And then uh, we'll end the video. You need help. I don't know what's going on there. A lot of missiles flying around. Anyway, we'll catch you at the next part of the video. I got to get this ship fixed. And uh, stay tuned, folks. Well, hey, everybody. We're here at the loadout section of the video for the Reliant series of ships by MISC. And we're going to go ahead and start with the base model, the Reliant Core. Um, as you can see, it's up on the screen. This is... I mean, truly the base series here, the one you can always buy uh, with real money. And um, what you'll see is really that all the weapons on the Reliant series, they're all the same as far as the guns are concerned. Uh, the missiles will change and the components will change throughout. But for all intents and purposes, except for the Tana, uh, the ships are pretty much very similar. They have low cargo capacity. Um, they, <laughs> they're, they're intended for specific roles, you know, um, because science gameplay really isn't in yet. Then there's really no purpose for the, for the Sen. And um, because there's no link to spectrum to do any type of reporting the reliant uh maco um it doesn't have its ability so i'm um, really the ships i think we should be really focused on is the reliant core is a light freight hauler um and really the reliant tana as kind of a a light fighter with a ton of missiles for a light fighter um so but let's go ahead and get started with the reliant core uh, as we can see from uh, the screen here at Urkel.Games, the DPS Calculator Live. Um, our gun loadout right now is DPS does 2,280 with 330 alpha damage. It's loaded up default with uh, two size one gimbaled uh, M3As. And then it has, surprisingly, it has actually the two size twos with the Toshima turret on the on the wings and if we click here we can see that there's a gilroy gimbal which is a size 3 gimbal it's a, so it's a size 4 hard point to allow size 3 gimbals um letting you letting you have a size 3 gun so if we switch it to that you can see we can mount up different size threes or which what i think's better uh because 314 all the dps's were normalized uh, having those two uh, size twos actually gives you more DPS. So if I put up uh, an attrition size three, the nice thing about it 
is that it's gimbaled, right? I mean, with with a size one, um, you you always want to put a gimbal on it because you can't go below size one. So, um, but these are size two hard points, so you could have a fixed loadout. So it's there, there's all kinds of things you can do with the Reliance series to kind of make it a little bit a little bit different. Um. If you put a like, if you if you change it to a size two, obviously you can put the size two components on there. Um, you notice that the size one, the is 340 DPS, and the size two, the fixed is 400 DPS. Um, so I would probably, it, it definitely if I had joysticks, I would stick with the the size two fixed. But the nice thing about it is you could go a fully gimbal loadout if that's kind of what you're looking for with some two size ones and two size threes. So let's see what that looks like. We'll go fully gimbal here. Uh, and this will, this will kind of be true for all the Reliance series because they all have the exact same gun loadout here. So if we go fully gimbaled, I definitely recommend. I know the, the DPS is pretty much the same, but I would go with a repeater because it fires faster. Um, so I'd probably go CF 117s because they're cheaper to buy. Then for my size three gimbals, I would do 337 Panthers. Um, and that gives us a DPS of 1,672, which is less than what it came with stock. But you have the benefit of everything being gimbaled, auto gimbaled, so it's auto targeting. And it's it's quite a lot of DPS for a light fighter. Um, now, if you wanted to go the other route and go fixed, you're going to get more DPS out of this. Um, so we'll change out our turrets from the Gilroy gimbal to the Toshima turret. And uh, for our fixed guns, we'll, we'll, we'll put on size two Badgers, which are 400 DPS. And then we'll put on um, size two Badgers again, but it'll be times two. So now we have six guns in this loadout. Notice our DPS went up significantly to 2,400 DPS at 240 alpha damage. And that's going to fire really quick too. So not bad, not bad at all. Um, our missiles here, so we have a total of four missiles. Um, we have two size two launchers here. Uh, they can be changed to a size three or a size one uh, missile launcher, but I think size two is a, a good medium ground. I would get rid of the ignites, the, the infrared stuff. I'd either put a, a cross section on there or preferably a dominator two or preferably something in the mix there. So strike force two, dominator two, that's a decent, you got four missiles there. Now, the Reliant Core comes with, as far as shields go, all the shields are the same. But one day, they're actually going to be different. So, it does come with civilian grade C shields. Um, if I was going to do a max loadout on it, I'd put in FR-66 and probably a Palisade. Um, for power plants, I would go with the JS-300, uh, which is military grade A. It's the best you can get, you know, unless you're trying to go stealthy, which this ship really isn't made for stealth. For coolers, I would go with our tried and true ultra flows. And for a quantum drive, it comes with a rush, which does not let you go from PO to Microtech in one jump. Um, so I would go down to the tried and true Atlas, which is civilian grade A. So it spools up quick, spools down quick. It'll get you from PO to Microtech in eight minutes, which isn't bad for a size one quantum. This is pretty much all we can do. Um, so our missiles will do 15,000 damage. Um, our shields are at 3,000 hit points. You, no matter what we do in 314, that's going to be like this. Full charge in four seconds. Um, you can see our power, we're, we're just a little over half, and there's not much we can do. We have a lot of lasers going on here. Um, I don't. I, we could go with uh, like a Breton power plant and take our power down below half. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, then by all means, go ahead and do that. The Bretons do cost 52,000, but there's only one of them. The JS-300 is 19,000, and I think it's it's a fair trade-off. We're really close to half, which is where you want to be at minimum uh, on the power, uh, total power. As far as cooling goes, you don't have to upgrade to Ultra Flows, but I just like to. Um, we're way below halfway of what we need to be. Uh, we have 880 total cooling, and we're only using 92. You can see our EM and our IR are really high, so you're not going to be stealthy with this ship at all. So let's move on to, uh, I'm going to go through the rest of these pretty quick. Uh, let's move on to the next ship, the Mako. So again, the ship comes with four lasers and uh, four missiles, and then just this one has all stealth components, but you can see the stealth is actually still pretty high. So I'll tell you what, let's do a stealth build on the Mako. 
And the reason I'm calling them Mako, remember, is because that's what they do in the video, which you probably haven't seen yet, but you will. Uh, it's probably a Xion thing. For the lasers, um, because you're stealth, I would just stick with everything gimbaled, um, to be honest with you. Notice it doesn't come stock with the two size three, so you're going to have to buy those and put those on. Um, you could go with a cannon. Let's go with a cannon build on this one because cannons do have just a little bit more DPS. Um, so I believe the M3As are... No, they're not the cheapest. Uh, the FL11s and the uh, Omniski 3s looks like they're the cheapest. So we'll go with the Omniskis and uh, we'll put those on there. And then for the size 3s, we'll go with the Omniski 9s. And oh, that filled in. Okay. And you can see our DPS is 1680. Um, you definitely get more DPS with the, the fixed size 2s in here. But this one's fully gimbaled. So it's, it, that's good for a stealth build. Um, as far as the missile launchers go, I guess if I was going for stealth, I would go with the high, like, you're only going to get one size three missile, It'll actually to total of two, but I'd probably go with that over anything else. I would stick with cross section. Um, as far as shields would go, stealth, I would go with the Mirage. I know the hit points are the same, but um, I'm not sure if it's actually going to. Yeah, it does lower our our IR, our infrared here. So uh, yeah, I would stick with the Mirage. Notice with the stealth build and adding these two weapons, it, our, our EM and our IR does go up. With our power plants, I would go with the Slipstream. Notice we don't have enough power to run our systems here. So let's let's see if this actually is going to work. Uh, we'll go with two Glaciers. Oh wait, Snowblinds is what we should have. And then we should have a Stealth Drive, the Spectre. So we actually don't have enough power with the slipstream to run our ship. So you're going to have issues with that. Plus, we're not really stealthy. Our IR is actually really high. Our EM's not bad. So if we just get rid of these weapons, maybe. I don't want to. Um, we'll reset this. And we can actually run like this. It's very high on power. Um, I don't I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Let's go. Let's go fully go. See, this is a more of a challenging loadout here. Let's wonder if we should do the cannons or the repeaters. Um, really, ballistics is the way to go for stealth because they just don't have a lot of uh, of EM or IR for a lot of them. Um, let's look at stealth for our cannons. I think the FL was the, the lowest one. Um, 2.66. Oh man, the light strike is really low too. So it's the M3. All oh, those are all the same. Definitely not that guy. Um, let's go with the light strike ones. For cannons. For the size threes, um, I'm looking at power to EM and temperature to IR. The IR temperature is lower for the FL 33s. I, I think that's probably the winner here, but. It's close. It's definitely not the Quarreler. The Quarreler is very hot and the Omin Omninsky is very hot too. So I, maybe the Light Strike 3 here with the lowest EM. And we're still in our power here. I think this may take us over. Yeah, this takes us over. So we can't do that. We'd have to upgrade our power plant here. And we're still at 10,000. <laughs> so... I just don't think it's going to happen. Uh, we could go with a military version, but our, our EM is going to be kind of off the charts. What about a civilian version here? Still really high competition. Nope. Industrial or EM is really high. So we could actually run this off of a light blossom or something like a power bolt, and we could actually run it. It looks like an ion burst. What, that's a grade B. And the light blossom is a grade C. So I, I'd probably say, let's try the ion burst. We actually have enough power to run the ship. Um, it's not going to be that stealthy, though. It's just because it has so many weapons. So there's a build for the Reliant Mako. Let's switch on over to the Reliant Sen, the science ship. Um, this one will go loud and proud, uh, but we'll stay with a... Uh, Really, it's the same build. You have four missiles. So actually, we've kind of already done this build with the Reliant Core. Use the Reliant Core build 
for this one. Uh, same shields, coolers, power plants, quantum, all that. It's, it's, it's pretty much the same. The one that's really different here is Reliant Tana, um, because it has, you can see it has way more missiles. It has bespoke launcher with eight size two missiles and two of those launchers. So it has 16 bespoke missiles. You cannot uh, change that bespoke missile launcher, but then you can actually change these other two missile launchers. Um, but I would leave them um, at size two, so you can just have more size twos. So maybe uh, have like, 16 cross-section strike forces and then four dominator twos i think that's a pretty darn good mixed i would go fixed with this entire build with the toshima turret um and we will do well we can go ahead and do cannons since we don't care if we're loud and proud um we'll, we'll pick the light strike too so why not i'm just picking them at random because the dps doesn't matter in 3.14 thanks cig Shields, uh, same as before, I would go with a Palisade, and I would go with an FR-66, but again, it doesn't matter. It's the same shield, hit point pool. Power plants, I would go with a JS-300. We still have enough power to run our systems, but you could. Let's go ahead and go with a Breton. You can see we're almost exactly at half at this point. Coolers, I would go with the Industrial Ultra Flows, and for Quantum Drive, go with the Trident True Atlas. So this, this is a powerhouse of a ship right here, guys. This thing's going to... Uh, it's, it's going to take out some targets. It's going to have a lot of missiles to do it. So there is the Urkel.Games build. Oh, one last thing is the paints. Um, paints are the same for all the different ships here. Uh, we'll start off with the Reliant Frostbite Camo Livery. Um, let you take a good look at this. Now, a, a lot of these came out at, at the same time all the Timberlands and, and the Invictus uh, liveries came out in 2951, I believe. Uh, the next livery to look at is the blue and gold livery. Um, this is highlighting the blue and gold of Invictus Launch Week, and uh, I think it looks okay on Vitana. Um, you know, it really, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And the last livery is the Reliant Timberline livery. Now, I like this one the best. I like the, the, the kind of the brown tones, uh, the earthy tones. Um, it looks more like a fighter to me on the Tana, but maybe the other ships would like to use a little bit more camouflage or something like that. So there's all three of the liveries plus, you know, the base liveries that the ships come with. And, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll move on to the next section, which should be the ship commercial for the Reliant series. Adaptability defined as being able to adjust oneself readily to different conditions an invaluable asset in a constantly changing universe. From the Kore to the Sen, the Mako, and the Tana, each model in Misk's Reliant family features advanced Shein designs. And the Reliant can acclimate to a multitude of purposes and situations. Contention, communications, discovery, and beyond. The universe we live in is always changing. Shouldn't you be? Misc Reliant.
All right, folks. Well, that just about does it for the Reliant series of uh, videos here. Um, we're coming into a landing at Port Olisar, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I know it's four ships, and hopefully we got through it quick enough uh, for you guys to get a, a grip on the Reliant series and kind of figure out what they're all about. Uh, I do have a correction from an earlier statement. The Reliant Tata here, which I'm in, even though the website, the RSI website says uh, zero SEU, it does actually have a spot. That was that weird spot when we first came into the to the right that uh, allows one SEU of cargo in this ship, which is really cool. That was a very odd landing. Lots of noise going on in Port Olisar tonight. It's very busy. Bad guys and good guys and all kinds of stuff going on. Anyway, guys, I want to thank you so much for watching. Uh, I want to thank Skidmark for his help. I want to thank everybody in, uh, in Cobra Force and Desert Rats and uh, Sons of Valhalla. Everybody appreciates you. Uh, if you like the video, then please uh, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. We are on a mission to get to a thousand subs. We're only a few hundred away. Um, the final word on the Reliant series. Uh, my vote is number one. Surprisingly, it's not the Tana. It's the Reliant Core. Why? Because it has six guns, just like the Tana, and it's got six SCU of cargo. So it's a little bit more multi-role, a little bit more capable. Whereas the Reliant Tana, while it does have a lot of missiles, and it's a very, very, very close second right now with the way missiles are working and operating, I'd, I'm not loving it, especially with the guns. Uh, if 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 the guns were different, and guns were better. It would be the it would be the Tana, hands down. But I, I got to give it up to the core. It's a great value for the ship that you get. It's got a, a good amount of guns. It's got a good amount of a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, that's my two cents worth. Uh, anyway, in September of 2021, Impact 3.14. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll catch you next time. And remember, if the fist don't get you, the lightning bolt will. Good night, Stanton.